Welcome back everyone. Today is the final day of the three-part series going over the Powerfly series. Right with me here I have the Trek Powerfly FS9 equipped. It's pretty much uh, the biggest name they could have for a bike, but it is well explanatory. Uh, it kind of follows a little bit of what Trek normally does with the system, but a little bit different at the same time. Welcome back, my name is Chris, and if this video turns out to be helpful for you, please leave a comment or subscribe, definitely helps me out. Today we are looking at the Powerfly FS9 equipped. This is pretty much Trek's highest end Powerfly model. They did have a few different variations throughout the years where they'd lean into a carbon fiber model, but now that is all gone. There is no carbon fiber model left. Even though it is a 9 series, which normally indicates carbon, it is no longer. Just as the Roscoe, they're just doing a higher end aluminum version. So this is a lightweight aluminum frame. It's still like 50 something pounds. You know, closer to 50 than 60, so it's not too bad. But overall, it's, it's an e-bike that's pretty good. The equipped model comes with a few additional features that none of the other ones have, and this is leading all the way up to the rails too. So right off the bat, you can see it has a rear rack here with a built-in light, and this is powered by the battery itself, so no need to change out batteries or recharge it. It's just hooked up and nothing is gonna drain it. The battery life is so good, you're not gonna need to worry about charging it to your lights, saving them on and off. You may as well run them as daytime lights all the time. Has that rear one directly on this rack, which is a MIC rack, so that's the mounting is key, I think is what it stands for, and that is becoming the more universal quick mount attachment, so you can get a few bags and different satchel things which will click right into here without any additional straps, and that is a pretty cool little feature. It does as well come with a front light to match with that rear light, both pretty darn bright, really good LEDs. Like I say, no power is being used, so you may as well have them on all the time. The second feature is the fenders. What's nice about these fenders is it actually comes with a few different options, or just a couple. You could take off the fenders altogether, although the rear one, I really would suggest keeping on because you do have the, the shock exposed at the back for debris to hit. So if you were trying to take this off, I definitely find some sort of mud guard or something to really defend that with. But on the front end, they actually supply you with a secondary one, which is just a short little stubby one. It's just kind of nice that you have those options. You don't have to be as commutery as you like, but with an e-bike, there's no real downside to taking them off. It used to be weight savings, hassle, heaviness, and there's really no downside to having them on. Sure, they, I don't know. I wouldn't say they look bad at all. I think it looks clean. It's a nice, suitable looking bike. You can go off road with this. You're not gonna be hammering down trails like a madman anyway. You're adventuring, you're exploring, you're going anywhere. So why not have the fenders? It kind of makes sense to be honest. These ones are uh, plastic, I believe. I honestly cannot tell. I think they're plastic. They feel plastic, but it's like a thick, durable one. One reason I think they may have gone with plastic is the rattling noise. So plastic is gonna hold into place a lot better, has a lot less weight to it. So it's not gonna shake around. If you look on the townie models, they all come with aluminum and fenders and these will rattle around. They'll make a lot of noise, especially off road. Something like this, no matter what trail you go on, no matter how rough it gets, it should be all silent, it should be very, very quiet. And that's a nice little thing to think of ahead of time as opposed to getting an aluminum one out there, getting all dented, destroyed, and having just a noisy, unbearably noisy ride, essentially. This one shares a few of the same features that the FS4 does. You have that dropper post, so again, this is a little seat post which is adjustable, really easy to get on and off the bike, as well as making riding that much easier, just getting it out of the way. As well, you do jump up to the 12 speed here, so on the previous two models, it's just been the 10-speed Dior. This one actually goes up to a 12-speed Dior, and it's actually the Dior XT stuff. So this is faster, lighter weight, and more reliable shifting. This means you're under pressure, when you're really pedaling hard, when you're really making a quick shift and you don't know what you're doing in a way and you're shifting all over the place, it's gonna be more reliable to just hit that shift perfectly dead on. It's a really nice shifting set, as well has a bit more texture to the grip, so you can actually really feel 
where it is. So when you're riding, you don't need to focus on where you are. It can just sit there and it's going to have a lot more grip and texture to it, which is really, really nice. The 12 speed as well will allow you to put more of your own power into it as opposed to just having the e-bike do everything for you. It is the same motor and battery system which is nice, works really well, the Bosch stuff works fantastically. But as you go up top it changes from that more basic display to a little bit more fancy. This is the Kobe stuff and this comes with remote controls on the left hand side here which you control your speed and assist with. But then you also get some arrows to swipe through menus, which are integrated with a smartphone app. And that just goes into this little tray here. So there's a lot to take in there. You do get a very basic display, which you can see information on. But the main idea is you plug in your cell phone, you connect to it, and then boom, you have this really cool system. Everything's gonna be shown. I wouldn't worry about waterproofing. Majority of cell phones now are waterproofed. So I don't think that's gonna to be too big of an issue. It does have quite the range. I don't think you'd fit the new iPad mini in there, but you're gonna fit a fair size phone. I wouldn't worry about that. Interestingly enough, they have actually switched back to the comfort grips for this one. So you're gonna have a bit more comfortable handlebar instead of the FS4, which had just more of a standard RAM grip, and the Powerfly 4, which had the FS9 style grip, where it's a bit more ergonomic. It's just gonna be a comfier ride. It's gonna give you a bit more palm kind of rest, it's, it's gonna be nice. XT brakes, so these are an upgrade again, a lot of braking power, really nice touch sensitivity to it. So it's like really nice to use, honestly, and a bit more user adjustment to it. So you're gonna be able to adjust and fit these exactly for the reach and feel you want out of it. Interestingly enough, they actually changed the tires on this. They actually went to something a little less aggressive but something a lot more durable. So this satire, which is gonna survive everywhere you go, it's really gonna excel on the hard pack, gravel, and more rough terrain. On the muddy, wet, kind of worse for wear pedaling, this is maybe not the most tractionable tire, but neither was the other one. This one is just gonna have a lot more durability to it. It's designed for e-bikes. It's gonna hold up a lot better. It's got reflective strips on it. So everything about this tire is designed for all purpose use. Anyone who's buying this bike is biking a lot and they know it. So it's nice that they think of these features. You're gonna put that reflective strip, more people will see you in the darkness. Longer lasting tread, you're gonna go further than you ever have before. This might not be your first e-bike, it's actually probably gonna be your second. And even if it is your first, you know you're gonna use it a lot. You come from a biking background, and that is something you know you're gonna do. The front fork is pretty much the same setup. It is the Air One, just like the FS4, but it's jumping up to the Xeron, so it's gonna be a little bit more performance out of it. You get the more infinite kind of clicks to it, so you can feel where a click is and really kind of choose a more specific compression rate. It's just nice to be able to customize and dial it up a little bit easier. As well, you will just get better performance out of this fork. It will be slightly lighter, couple of grams like on this weight of a bike it's not really worth mentioning but I'll mention it anyway overall these bikes look fantastic throwing the rear shock in the back is adding a lot of standover room it's allowing a more upright seated position so you're not going to have that sore back and shoulders this is more of a comfort style mountain bike as opposed to the trek rail which is more of a downhill style mountain bike. I wanna be the fastest on the trail. I wanna beat everyone. That's the Trek Rails position. If I'm just looking to get out there and adventure and go everywhere and hit all those same trails, but maybe I don't care if I'm the fastest. I don't even care if I get overtaken by a regular mountain biker, but I'm doing all that stuff. This is the setup you want here. Huge chain ring on the front. It's gonna really allow you to get those higher speeds really easy. And it's gonna take away a little bit of the wear and tear in the rear end. With a smaller chain ring, you end up focusing a lot on the high gears on the rear end. You burn through them pretty fast on e-bikes. Putting a big chain ring on the front means when you're putting in these higher kilometers, you're gonna get more life out of the whole cassette. You might be more mid-range. It really just uh, makes for a better bike setup, honestly. The Trek Powerfly FS9 equipped comes with everything you'd want on it, except for a bag to attach and a water bottle. 
Honestly, there's not much more you'd need to add to this bike before it's ready to ride. It comes with the kickstand, it's got the through axles on it, it's got every mountain bike feature you'd want, and it's got every e-bike feature you want. And that is something is hard to get in both, and it's in a design that is actually hard to get from everything as well. It's surprising they don't make this style of bike for just a just a regular bike, non-e-bike. Every feature it has is really something a lot of people are looking for. That being said, many of those people now are more interested in e-bikes. So this bike is really designed for anyone who is ready for an adventure, ready to go anywhere with it. You're gonna load it up, you already know you're gonna push the daytime light, so you're gonna want those lights, or you're gonna be crossing a lot of roads, doing a lot of gravel, and the daytime running features of them is gonna be really nice. So you turn on these lights and they're super bright, they're really well, you've got three LEDs on the front, on the bit back. So you turn on the lights, they're super bright, you've got three on the back, a super bright front one, these are di daytime rated, so you will be using them all the time. And like I said, this will not take up any of your power. You're not going to lose an extra kilometer even by having this running the entire time. It just, look at the size of this battery. Four little LEDs is going to do nothing towards that. So don't even worry about it. Huge range of this one. With the controls, you can see right on the console exactly how much distance is left on it. On this one, fully charged you are looking at, wait for it, 117 kilometers at 100% in eco mode. And then if you go all the way up to turbo mode, you're gaining 50 kilometers in straight turbo. And this will dynamically update as depending on what conditions you're in, and if you're climbing a hill, wind, you know, all that stuff. But it's really nice to see that you're getting up to 120 kilometers out of a charge now. It's, it's really fantastic. And I think a lot of people are gonna appreciate that. You're gonna be able to do camping trips, overnight trips, where you're not gonna necessarily have access to power. So it's nice, you could do a 25, 30K bike ride one direction, if not further on eco mode, sleep the night and then bike out and you're gonna have all the energy in the world. Or you're gonna be able to do it, which previously before maybe you couldn't because of ailments or fitness. E-bikes definitely help you get ahead in life and get you where you wanna be and be out there no matter what. And if you haven't tried one, you'll probably like it. It's hard not to like. If you're wanting to get out there more, this is a bike which will get you there and you won't need to spend any extra money. Not the cheapest one around to begin with, but it works really well and it's ready to go and it's coming with quality parts in mountain bike sense and electric sense. It ticks all the boxes you could ever want in comfort, in style, this is the Powerfly FS9. If you don't already have one, I don't know why. All right, guys, thank you for watching. 